Hey everybody, um, I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough um, and talk about uh, how to conduct a rhetorical analysis. Um, I'm for sure that most of you have had experience with this in English 1100 or in uh, with the other courses that you've taken prior to this one that have um, given you the, uh, the requisites to be in 2201, but I wanted to uh, quickly go back over it because it might have been a while for some of you depending on um, you know what, what year you're at in school. Um, so uh, rhetorical analysis, again, is a way of, of thinking deeply about a certain topic, a certain subject, an idea, a piece of writing. Um, it could be just about anything um, because everything that's constructed or everything that's made in the world, regardless of what it is, um, was done with an intention or with, with an idea behind it. And so the point of a rhetorical analysis is to try to tease out what that idea is. So. First, let's think a little bit about what rhetoric is. Um, rhetoric really simply is uh, just using uh, selected bits of information and language for a specific purpose. And usually that purpose is uh, to try to influence people, to influence you to do something um, that another person wants for you to do. And that might be you know, buying a refrigerator, it might be uh, voting for somebody, uh, it might be to evoke emo an emotion from you in the, in the, in the uh, example of using a piece of artwork. Um, so, that, you know, uh, the rhetorical choices that people make are, are, are varied and wide. Um, and so you c we can use just about any, any kind of a text um, as part of this rhetorical analysis to try to, to see what people were thinking and what they were trying to, um, the emotions and the ideas that they were trying to convey. Um, so... Rhetoric is, is age old. It's you know was kind of coined in the by the Greeks by Aristotle and um, you know we have from that we have Aristotelian thought and and, um, I, and argument. Um, Socrates and, and Plato and all those guys were all you know into the idea of of thinking about rhetoric and talking about rhetoric and, and pretty, as persuasion being one of the highest uh, forms of thought. Um, so for this, what I want to do is, is use an example. We're going to go th walk through um, how I conduct a, um, a rhetorical analysis. I want to kind of give you some ideas about, um, there's a, there are four really simple steps that I use to, to work through a rhetorical analysis, and that might be helpful for you as you're doing your, um, this Project One assignment, when I'm asking you to um, do a rhetorical analysis on two, uh, two texts, two journal articles, or, two, or a popular article and do that compare and contrast on them. Um, so the, the example that I'll use as we go through this is um, the Colin Kaepernick's uh, Nike ad, the, the one that came out a couple years ago that was kind of contentious and, and, and an issue. Um, the one where um, he, you know, he just basically just his face. Um, and, and that is a text. Right, so that, that still image is a text, and there was a, a multimedia uh, image that uh, video that went along with it as well, uh, where he kind of expounded on it. But really, the kind of the key, the focal point of that um, of that uh, advertisement campaign really came about through that still image of just of Colin Kaepernick's face, um, and then there's just a little bit of text that goes with it. So when we think about a text, the text can be really be anything, and I'm going to use that word a lot probably, um, and. In a text isn't just writing. A text can be a movie, it could be a, a film, a song, it could be a television show. But a text could also be something like a piece of artwork or um, an old um, uh, archaeological find. Um, because there's, there's information, there's ideas and emotions that are wrapped up in that some way. They're trying to convey some bit of information. And it really doesn't matter what, um, what the, the form is, as long as we understand that you can delve deeply into that to try to find uh, what, what the, the meaning is. Um, all right, so the, 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 the steps that, that you need to take for rhetorical analysis, at least the way that I do it, is, is first to not try to think about uh, what you think it's about, what, what you think the people are trying to say. Let's not jump into that step yet. We don't want to do that because you can miss something. So the first thing we want to do is summarize the text. We just want to say what we see. So in the um, example of the uh, Colin Kaepernick advertisement, the, the, what we're gonna see is just the, the face of a man. We don't, we don't necessarily know anything more than that it's a man. Um, we know that it's black and white. 
and we know that uh, there's a little bit of text on it. Um, so really that's all that we can say about it other than there is a little bit of um, negative space around it. There's, the, you know, the, there's a vignetting that's happening that's going to draw your attention to the man's face, but really that's really all that we can say about it. Um, what we need to think also now is to think about context. So when did this advertisement come out? We really need, that's the next step is to think about context. And so what was happening in the culture that, um, that this, that this text was brought into, in this case, this advertisement. So we need to think now, you know, what was happening that caused this text to come in, come into existence. So, uh, in the case of Colin Kaepernick, we know that he, we we're going to go ahead and say that this was Colin Kaepernick in this advertisement. And so what about him? What about his situation was happening? So of course we know that, that he had, uh, um, begun his, his silent protest on the sidelines of the football games and was starting to get a lot of heat uh, and a lot of controversy was surrounding him from all different sides from um, and, you know including up to the White House um, you know, he's, he's getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, negative attention from you know from the president and from, from everybody in between um, he also need to understand that he you know was, was a fairly success, successful probably not the most successful football uh, quarterback at the time but he was really good and had um, his uh, had a, a, kind of a bright future ahead of him um, and so that's that's kind of the context that's going on here so this is 2016 right after the presidential election which um, we're starting to get into a lot of uh, the Black Lives Matter issue was happening uh, we're starting to see a lot of um, you know uh, racial injustice was was really was happening we're you know we're, we're deep into um, this kind of a lot of notoriety about um, you know police violence against young black men was happening um, so that's that's kind of the context that, that this is happening in um, and of course Kaepernick was taking a stand on that and trying to say you know that he is a um, you know he he was going to not uh, not uh, be a part of uh, honoring the, the, the national anthem because he felt that it wasn't honoring uh, everyone in the country. So we understand that. All right, so what we're going to do then is look at the careful examination of this text, which is our third step. And so what we really need to think about is, you know, what are the elements here? What is going on here? So we need to think uh, with this advertisement, what we want to do is look and say, okay, who is this guy? What is he doing? What is he saying? Why does it matter? Um, we want to look at why is it in black and white? That has to mean something or else they would have put it in color. So the black and white text means, uh, the black and white of the color definitely means something. It, it strips this image down to its very basic uh, elements and is trying to convey that this is a black and white issue, both uh, in terms of you know black and white America and also that it's black and white in terms of there's only one, you know, there's, there's good and there's bad here. And so that, 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 that choice of color um, emphasizes the, the, both of those two things. Um, we also want to think about the text that's being used here. So um, we we know that the, the that Nike swoosh is there. That's that image, and he says, um, and the language is you know, uh, you know that you, basically that you have to take a stand and that you're going to be willing to give up everything if if you feel that it's the right thing that you have to do. Um, and so the, the, it's a very simple imagery, but it's very um, positive. Uh, I mean, it's very, it's very impactful because um, Kaepernick was taking a stand. He gave up a lot of money to uh, to do the thing that he did. We also need to think um, about what Nike was thinking when they put this advertisement out too, because this was really a risk for Nike at the same time. Um, so we need to think about what was happening uh, in terms of um, Nike's choice. You know, it, this this was risky for them because um, they knew that they were going to uh, take some heat. And so we'll think about a little bit more about what happened f to that, uh, to them um, in the next step here. I, w I do want to go back a little bit too, though. Uh, well, no, let's not do that. Um, all right, so the fourth step that we're going to do is we really want to think about supporting the argument, our argument with evidence. So we're going to have a thesis here too. And we're ne we need to say what we think this advertisement is about and then use evidence to support what we're trying to say or the argument that we're trying to make. So in this case, we would go back and look probably and say, all right, so you know, how successful was Kaepernick? Can we have, do, are there any statistics out there that can prove it? Um, 
was uh, was he you know what what did he give up we could probably bring in all kinds of evidence about um, the impact that he's had both on him in terms of his ability to um, to you know to bring bring in money for himself to you know as a job but also what did this do to his reputation and what kind of um, what kind of slandering did he take personally in terms of this um, and then what we want to do is, is probably do some looking at um, so what was Nike thinking when they did this and we can I'm sure we there's all kinds of evidence that you could go and find if you were willing to do the to, to do take the time to do the evidence for this uh, examination but you know Nike knew that they were going to have um, a bit of a controversy on their hands um, and they did for the first you know week or so after this advertisement came out there were a lot of people in, in the country who were pretty angry and pretty pissed off about um, about Nike's choice to to pay um, Colin Kaepernick for this advertisement um, but what we need to think in and, and of course there was a they associated dip in um, stock price and all of that but what we need to think is um, we, we need to bring some evidence in to say well what was the long game that Nike was playing here because you know they, they knew that they were going to take a, a hit initially um, but uh, you know what what was their long their long game because uh, you know, what is the, the market demographic? The people who were reacting negatively to this advertisement were um, definitely, um, you know, were, were probably older white males, I would assume. Um, but that's not necessarily, I, I would assume, who Nike is, um, is, is marketing to. They're marketing to the young people. They are mar marketing to, um, you know, the... the, the um, you know, young black kids, young white kids who are out playing basketball, not the old white people who are ones burning their tennis shoes for no reason, which didn't make any sense, you know. Um, so Nike was, was looking, and not, not just in this country, but also outside of the United States, because they have a huge international market, too. So they weren't just thinking about um, how, you know, whether or not, you know, the, the old white people were going to get angry or pissed off about um, this this advertisement that they're going to take, but what what were the young kids thinking about Nike? And, and you know, I think we could probably assume that um, that they saw Nike as taking their side, or, or, or at least trying to think about uh, supporting their their viewpoint as well. So that was really smart for them. Um, in the thesis, I think we probably at this point, now that we're a couple years out, if I was doing a rhetorical analysis on this, I would have to say, so what? How successful has um, Colin Kaepernick's uh, choice been how has his uh, advocacy been and I think when we look at you know the cases of, of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and um, just the rash of violence that just keeps going and going and going I have to think that um, they probably would not have gotten the same level of um, visibility and notoriety of their cases in the in the protests would not still be going on had not Kaepernick um, stepped up and, and, and taken the stand that he did, um, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's, if you're doing an analysis, you might you know, have to think about that, but that's, you know, that, that's something that you would have to think about too, is, is you know, how is, how is the situation, how is Kaepernick's advocacy um, keep, keep playing out in, in today's, uh, in, in the news and in this, the, um, the, this push for, towards racial, racial justice that we're seeing uh, today. Um, I think I'd also, all right, so those are the four steps, and you want to, so you want to summarize the text, you don't want to really take a, um, start your an analysis until you're able to summarize the text, tell us what's happening, you want to put the, uh, the, the, this text into context, tell us what was happening at the time that it was brought into the world, then you want to jump into your careful examination and say that this, you know, this, this is what I see, this is what I think I see. Um, and this is what I think it means. And then the fourth step is to bring in some evidence that's going to prove uh, your argument, not just saying that this is what I think, but this is what the evidence also proves. And one of the ways that we do that is um, through the use of ethos, logos, and pathos. It should be nothing new to anybody. Um, you, should, you should know this pretty well at this point. Um, ethos, of course, is uh, credibility. Um, logos is logic, and pathos is emotion. And I always think about um, you know, pathet pathetic is the word that always comes up to mind, so that's how I, I get it back to emotion, because I, you know, I'm not very good with Greek. I don't speak Greek, so I speak English. Um, so those are the three um, uh, appeals that you're usually gonna see when you're doing these advertisements, or uh, a rhetorical analysis. 
I would assume that for this project one, it's almost always going to be either an ethos or a logos appeal uh, based based on um, the, what I'm asking you to look at, which is um, journal articles from your your um, from your uh, career field or your intended your your intended career field or your major. Um, so that's going to be all about credibility and logic. Um, and then when you're doing these rhetorical analyses, um, remember to to, there are some questions that you need to ask yourself um, that are kind of always going to be core to trying to determine if you're on the right track. So one of those is, what is the claim, right? What is What are these people trying to say? Who is the author of this text? What are they trying to say? What What is their argument? Um, that's going to be your, the central thesis, their central thesis, and that's where you can start to work out to say, did they were they able to prove their thesis? What evidence did they bring? You know, did they even bring any evidence or is it all completely just, you know, a one-sided emotional appeal of this is the way that I feel or this is the way that I think, which is not a very good claim. Um, so look for the evidence, the specific citable evidence that the uh, author brings in. And then, you know, part of that is what are the authorities that they're citing? Are the people that they're citing credible? Because just because you bring in evidence doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be credible. It could be a bunch of malarkey. You know, it could be people who have absolutely no credibility. If you bring to me a Wikipedia entry or, um, you know, some like songlyrics.com, I'm not going to look at that and say that these are authoritative sources. They're just not. Um, so we need to think about that. And then the other thing that to ask yourself is, there, are there any logical fallacies happening uh, with the argument that, the, the, that are being made by the author uh, or the, the, the composer of the, uh, the text that you're, you're analyzing? You need to say, you know, is this makes sense? Does it? Uh, are they? Are, is this an argument that even makes sense at all? And if it's not, then that's one uh, you might want to take a, a look at, um, trying to you know poke holes in their argument, or it might not even be worth doing using that text at all. So, um, so think about that. Um, so that's kind of how you do a rhetorical analysis. There's a, a written piece out there uh, on Canvas that you can look at as well, and I'm going to put up some slides that I usually talk about in class. Uh, that may be helpful. But if you guys have any questions whatsoever about how to conduct a rhetorical analysis, um, I'd be glad to help you with that. Um, you just have to let me know, shoot me a, a, an email, or um, get in touch with me on Microsoft Teams over uh, you know video or audio chat. All right, talk to you guys later.